We've been learning a lot about melee combat, but now it's time to take the next step in our evolution. Today, we're going to learn to make and use early game ranged weapons. Our options are extremely limited this early on, so first we're going to go foraging for rocks. They're nature's bullets. There are a few different kinds of rocks, but we're just looking for the plain ones without any adjectives. Six or seven will probably do it. They're usually just lying around in open fields like this. Once we've got the rocks, we'll drop them all on the floor. Next, we'll press I to open our inventory, then select our jeans and press Enter. We can see that our jeans have four pockets, which is probably what you'd expect. We'll press Enter on the first one to pull up the pocket settings panel. See this? We want to select Switch to Modifying Blacklist. Now that we're modifying the blacklist, we select Whitelist Blacklist Item, press Enter, then forward slash and search for Rock. Press Enter again. Rocks are now blacklisted from that pocket. We'll repeat the process for our other three pockets. There, all done. Now, because we've told our character not to put rocks in her pants, she'll put them in her only other suitable container, the messenger bag. This will make things much easier in a few moments. Blacklists, whitelists, and priority settings can help keep your inventory organized, which is really important when you're looting. You don't want to drop your backpack before a fight only to find out that your gun and all your bullets were inside. Now that that's done and your rocks are in your bag, open the build menu. Press forward slash and type target. We're going to choose make practice target. Open your inventory. Your rocks should all be in a single line. If they're not, that means you have a pocket somewhere you forgot to blacklist. Select the rocks, press enter, and choose reassign. This will allow us to open up a hotkey to the rocks. We'll choose lowercase t. Now we can simply press t, which prompts us to throw something. Pressing t again, we'll select our rocks via the hotkey. We should automatically aim at the target. Press enter to throw. If we look at our throwing skill, we'll see that it's grown by a couple of percentage points. Now let's repeat the process until our throwing reaches 1. We have to go back and pick up our rocks a few times, but eventually we get to one rank, which should considerably improve our accuracy. Reaching one rank in throwing has unlocked the throwing practice action, which can quickly take us to three ranks. We may as well do that now. Alright, now we'll take these babies for a spin. Here we go. Rocks have a base damage of 7, but our strength and throwing skill add a bit more to that. We can easily do 10 or 12 damage on a throw, which isn't nothing, but the range isn't great and the zombie will catch up quickly. Let's head back home and see what else we can do. Next we have to pull down the drapes on three of our windows and collect all three long strings. Having one rank in throwing and one in fabrication, which you can easily reach by following the steps in episode 1, unlocks the sling recipe. We can make it with three long strings. A sling is a strip of cord that you can whip around to throw pebbles. It's different from a slingshot, which is really more of a toy. Both exist in this game, but we want the sling, so let's get to crafting.
Next, we'll need ammo. Our rocks are a bit too big for our sling, so open the crafting menu, hit forward slash, and search for pebble. Go ahead and craft this twice. Doing this twice destroys two of our rocks and nets us 20 pebbles. Let's wield the sling and take a look at it. The stat block for ranged weapons is a bit confusing, so let's break it down. We can see here that the stats below are the default for our ammo type, pebbles. That's what we're using. So far, so good. Slings can use a few other things as ammo, like marbles and bearings, but we don't have any of those right now. Now we look at range damage. The 2 here is the base damage of a pebble. If we threw it by hand, we'd expect it to do about that much. The 4 is the damage our sling adds to our shots. The maximum range of our sling is 18 tiles. That's quite far, though accuracy will fall off very quickly if we get closer to 18. Dispersion is the amount by which our shots will randomly be off target even if our aim is perfect. The sling itself has a dispersion rating of 150, while the pebbles add 14. Lower dispersion is better, and 164 is actually quite good. Sight dispersion is similar to dispersion, but represents how much our actual aim might be off even if we're rolling perfectly. Sight dispersion is similar to dispersion, but represents how much our actual aim might be visually off even if we're rolling perfectly. This doesn't mean much on a sling, but if you're shooting a rifle or something, you could bring the number down by modifying the gun with better sights. It takes 50 moves or one half second to put a pebble in the sling. This doesn't sound too bad, but it isn't accounting for you fishing the pebble out of your pocket. That might add a second or more to the total firing time. So overall, the sling is a fast, weak weapon. It doesn't mention it here, but it's one-handed, which means it can be fired effectively while one of your arms is injured or while you're driving a car or riding a bike. So, obviously, let's try it out. With our sling in hand, we'll stand about 18 tiles from the zombie and press F. Choose one of your ammo piles if it prompts you. This opens the fire menu like it did with the spear, except now we have a bit more information in the sidebar, and it's a lot to take in. These asterisks between the two brackets are our steadiness. This is how steady our aim is. Low steadiness will increase our dispersion, making our shots less accurate. If you're using a gun, steadiness will also reduce the impact of recoil. One-handed weapons, like pistols and slings, are easier to steady than two-handed weapons like bows and rifles. This is our current aim. The brackets below are another meter. The fuller it is, the better our aim. As you can see, it's currently very low. If we press the period key, we'll spend one-tenth of a second trying to aim. This will cause the meter to go up slightly. This is how we manually aim. We can continue to press period until we're either happy with how full our bar is, or the zombie is too close and we need to move. This is how many moves it would cost if we fired right now. This time is immediately spent when we press enter, and our shot will go off at the end of it. If the enemy moves before we take our shot, we'll automatically adjust our aim to compensate, so don't worry too much about that. There are three options we can choose to automatically aim. Think of them as presets. A is a snapshot, C is the middle of the road, and P is about as well as we could possibly aim. To review, if you want to aim and fire manually, just pay attention to this bar and press period until you feel like you're on target. Once you're ready, press F if you want to fire. And that's a hit. Unfortunately, our shot didn't do any damage. Let's try again. There we go, 8 damage. Let's press capital P to open the message log and see if we can figure out what happened. Our first attack was only a grazing hit and did no damage, while our second attack was a good hit, which did one point more than our weapon's stated total of 7 damage. Ranged attacks are calculated using a number of factors including range, perception, dexterity, dispersion, target size, and weather to determine how on target our shot is. The damage total is modified by the result. This serves in place of melee's critical hit system. The better the game rates your shot, the more damage it adds. The inverse is also true. In this case, getting a grazing attack lowered our base damage below 1. Basic zombies have 80 hit points, so this will take several shots. Just like with the spear, we can calmly walk away and line up another shot once we've got enough room. Oh, he almost got me there.
As you can see, this isn't the most efficient way to get things done, but a sling and 20 pebbles fits easily in your pocket and can really help you out in a pinch, softening up incoming enemies before you switch to melee. But surely we can do better. Now we're going to try something a little more advanced. I've got here a plank, a long stick, a rock, and a long string. Next, we'll need to get our survival skill up to two. If you followed the first video, you should have one survival by now thanks to the makeshift hammer we made. But just in case, I'm going to show off another way to raise it. Press escape and go to options. Scroll down to additional auto features and choose enabled, then scroll down to auto foraging. Press enter once and it should change to bushes. Now press escape. If we walk out into the woods, we'll find underbrush. Normally you can press E to root through underbrush for items, but we've got it set to automatically do that. Approach the underbrush and you'll see a message about foraging. If you don't, it means this bush is no good. Find another one. Each time we forage, we earn a little bit of survival skill. With auto forage on, we can wander around the woods until our survival reaches one. It shouldn't take long. Now that that's done, we'll open the options menu again and turn off additional auto features. This is a very handy tool, but if you leave it on, you might accidentally waste time foraging through bushes when something's chasing you through the woods later. Now we need to gather up some planks. You should have plenty in your firewood pile. If not, you can disassemble the benches up here for more. Once we have a few, press ampersand and forward slash to search for a digging stick. The digging stick is a primitive tool for tilling soil or digging up clay, but we're not actually worried about that right now. We're just making a couple of these to grind out our survival skill. After making one or two, it should reach two ranks. Next, we'll need to disassemble our long string. Now we can open up the crafting menu with these items nearby and hit forward slash to search for adds. A stone adds is a primitive woodworking tool that can help us do a ton of early game crafting. See how long this is taking? This is a much more complicated task than we're used to. We actually run out of daylight here and have to go over to the computer to get enough to finish our task. This is something you should be paying attention to whenever you're doing crafts or construction work. This is weariness, and it is deadly. Normally I'd advise stopping work when you see it gets moderate, but I'll push our character here in order to better explain what's happening. Okay, the ads is done, but now we're weary. What's that mean? Well, there are three factors that represent how tired you are. Stamina is just your breath. If you ran 100 meters, you'd be out of breath, but you would recover very quickly. Rest just represents how sleepy we are. Weariness is overall muscle fatigue from long-term activity. You'd feel weary in real life if you worked an 8-hour shift on a construction site or did a lot of weightlifting. Unlike stamina, we recover very slowly from weariness. Depending on how weary you are, you'll receive bigger and bigger speed penalties to activities. Activities have different levels. Walking, for instance, is a moderate activity. Running is an active activity. And making a melee attack is an extreme activity. That's right, we currently have a 500% penalty to our melee attack speed. Weariness can be terrible if you aren't paying attention and try to fight something while you're worn out. Because of this, it's important to keep an eye on your current activity level and your weariness. If you're starting to get weary, you don't necessarily have to stop crafting, but you will become slower and more inefficient. You can power through like we just did, but it's smarter to take it slow. Other activities, like sewing or reading, are much more low energy and can be done while you rest. Weariness usually takes several hours to recover from, and it goes much faster if you're sleeping. Try to think of it like your energy meter in Stardew Valley, except eating doesn't refill it. Having a balanced diet, exercising regularly, taking the fast metabolism trait, and having a high athletic skill will significantly improve both your stamina and your weariness thresholds, allowing you to get more work done. Lastly, the speed penalties for weariness do not apply to ranged attacks. If you happen to have a gun, you can still use it in an emergency, even if you're totally exhausted. The sun has gone down, so let's eat a protein ration, have some water, and go to bed.
we can watch our weariness recover while we sleep. Now, with that all done, we take another long stick in our sling and we open the crafting menu again. Hit forward slash and search for Staff Sling. The Staff Sling is the sling's cooler older brother and it is absolutely deadly. If we press the right angle bracket, we can scroll down the right panel to view its stats. It fires actual rocks, which have a base damage of 7 and it adds 10 to that. Considering our character's strength and skill, that could easily be over 20 damage per shot. If you don't see the staff sling here when you search for it, it's probably because you don't have 3 fabrication. If you followed the instructions in the first video, you should be at 3 already. If not, you can head over to the crafting tab and work on basic carpentry. It only requires wood, nails, and a hammer. You should have all those things from episode 1. Carpentry practice will take your fabrication to 3 really quickly. Either way, with that all done, we can make our staff sling. It'll consume our old sling, but believe me, it's worth it. With some rocks in our bag and staff sling in hand, we'll head out. We find a zombie and take aim from our maximum range of 20 squares. I'll manually aim here, and you might notice that our steadiness is increasing more slowly than it did with the regular sling. The staff sling is a two-handed weapon, and as such, it is a little more unwieldy. As you can see, we didn't quite kill it, but we did do a lot of damage. But here's the fun part. The staff sling is also a melee weapon. It's not quite as good as the cudgel, and it'll break if we use it too much. But still, let's give it a whirl. So there you have it. We have made a deadly hybrid ranged and melee weapon that can shoot farther than some handguns and does almost as much damage. It's silent and its ammunition is free. If you want a reliable shooter that you can use every single day without worrying about conserving resources, the Staff Sling is absolutely it. Now I'll admit, we had to go down quite a rabbit hole to get this weapon, and if that's not your style, don't worry. It's perfectly fine to use the last video's melee weapons until you find something better in town. I just wanted to introduce the Staff Sling both for players who are interested in getting right into ranged combat and because it gave me the chance to take you through the crafting process. It might have seemed like a lot of work to get the Staff Sling built, but the skill ranks we gained will pay dividends throughout our character's life, and the ads we made is a very useful tool that opens up a lot of crafting options. Before you head out and start lobbing rocks at zombies, you might want to go through your crafting menu and see if you've unlocked anything interesting.